So as, as South India Coffee Co, we export most of our coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a percentage of it that, that we have started uh, keeping for the Indian market because over the last two years, I saw a massive demand in the local market mm -hmm. for specialty coffee. And that kind of started getting me to think that, okay, we need to start keeping a small amount of coffee for the Indian market. That small became medium, the medium is going to become large. So it's going to be a, a good amount of coffee that is being uh, set aside for the Indian market now. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is the first of a five-part series. And one that I'm actually very embarrassed to say we haven't had before. Uh, we haven't had a series that really starts to look at the Indian coffee industry. And so it is my absolute honor to welcome Komal Sable and Akshay Dashrath to the podcast for the, for the first time. The first of many, I hope. Welcome, guys, to the podcast. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. It's a pleasure, guys. We are talking about future-proofing coffee production in India. This came about because of an introduction from a very dear friend of both of ours. Um, Andrew from Coffee Knowledge Hub introduced us. Um, and, and that is because uh, I have the great honor of coming to India later in October to WCC World Coffee Conference. And, and Let's start the conversation around what WCC is, and then we're going to move the conversation to give you guys giving us a, uh, an understanding of what the, Indus the Indian coffee landscape is like from an industry level. So I don't know who wants to take this one. So probably you, Koma. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'll take this one. So WCC is is a World Coffee Conference, and that happens once in four years, every four years, and it is hosted by uh, international uh, the ICO, which is the International Coffee Organization, and it's co-hosted with uh, Coffee Board of India. So uh, they're coming to India for the first time. This is the first time mm. this event is happening. Uh, in Asia, so we are very, very excited for it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an absolute amazing event where 80 different ICO country delegates are going to be there. There's going to be a lot of workshops, talks, um, policy level meetings. So we're going to have probably a lot of industry professionals and mm. people who actually are going to come and see what Indian coffee is all about for the first time. And we are very excited to welcome all of them here. And I you am, for sure. Thank you so much. I am so honored to be coming and I am so excited about coming and seeing what the Indian coffee industry is all about because you guys are booming with regards to coffee production, with regards to coffee consuming businesses, uh, coffee roasteries. Uh, the innovation over there must be wild and I can't wait to see it and I can't wait to meet all the delegates and 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 just walk around and have really amazing conversations with people about what they think the future of coffee is in general because there are so many things that are up in the air when it comes to climate when it comes to coffee production um, actually I know that you have a lot of things that you're going to reveal to us particularly about different varieties and species of coffee which i got to tell you, I was having a conversation with someone on Instagram today about Robusta, Conifera, and you came up in the conversation. I was like, I met a coffee producer yesterday that told me and got, folks, if you're listening to this, we're going to tell you some things about Robusta that you never knew. And I am wildly surprised about. So we're going to get, um, get to that throughout this series. So why don't you guys tell us about the Indian coffee landscape. Do you know? Go, All right. So, so the Indian coffee landscape is, if you picture, like just close your eyes and picture a forest. Okay. Under the forest, there is this these beautiful coffee trees. Um, you have a second canopy, which is a you know a tiered. Uh, it's shaded. It's mm -hmm. all shaded. You have fruit trees, you have pepper wines, you have beautiful bird life. 
and you have fantastic biodiversity all around you with wow. arabica cluster birds chirping and it's absolutely stunning at this this is the farm level picture i'm giving you and and Lee, i mean to be honest uh, indian coffee unlike a lot of other um, places we actually grow under shade it's not 10 trees per acre for example our arabica blocks have about 300 trees per acre minimum wow. that's only the old trees and then we have a tier two shade which is which is basically a nitrogen fixing uh, large shrub trees which also grow up to about 40 50 feet and we've got another 200 of those per acre Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros, and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. Wow. So, I mean, looking at a really, really dense, uh, uh, you're looking at really dense cover, high organic matter, and this is our traditional uh, Arabica farms. The Robustas, of course, are a little bit more open. So this is not like new innovative ways of growing. This is, as you were saying, generational. Like this is the way that coffee is produced in India. Yeah, for, and, uh, for example, yes. And for example, we've done a climate study of, uh, uh, of, of, of our farm along with a few other farms Gomal works with, with South India Coffee Company. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've analyzed our, uh, our deforestation since the 80s. Mm-hmm. And um, our farm, for example, has had 1.2% deforestation in the last 30 years, mm-hmm. while um, the highest was uh, uh, about 2%, which is nothing. Right. I mean, and that's quite topical right now with everything that's happening in the EU and with regards to people having to define how much deforestation has taken place on their land if they want to export into the EU, import into yes. the EU. And right. Uh, Go on. I mean, for example, to give you an idea, our, our, our uh, least shaded coffee growing blocks probably have about 50% shade. Our heaviest shaded is about wow. 80%. Wow. And so people are growing Arabica and Robusta, you were saying? Yes. Like, so, so give us an idea of what are the kinds of, of species that are grown there and... Like, what's the majority? Is it mostly Robusta? Is it mostly Arabica? Is it specialty? Is it commercial? What's that kind of landscape like? So that landscape, so we have uh, its majority Robusta now. And Mm -hmm. then we've got Arabica. There is a percentage of, a very, very small percentage of Excelsior. um, Or Liberica. uh, Or Liberica as well. Now, Mm -hmm. uh, that is... That is uh, essentially people are moving towards Robusta, a production of Robusta now. Uh, mm-hmm. Initially, during this area, uh, you know, this region where we are in Kurg, uh, especially this belt that we're in, uh, was predominantly Arabica growing region. And it is slowly moving to Robusta now. So that is uh, where we are. In terms of com- commodity or commercial coffees and speciality, I think, you know, the speciality boom is just about happening now. So mm-hmm. slowly there are producers coming into the speciality, uh, you know, the things where, you know, start start fermentations or even picking ripe coffees and things like that. Those things are happening slowly, but mm-hmm. majority of the coffee is uh, commercial. Commercial. Coffee. And the specialty is like, are, are you you guys are both coffee producers, correct? What are yes. you guys growing? So uh, the ancestral farm was Arabica, but my grandfather began swapping. Uh, uh, and, and it's basically uh, my mother's inheritance. Mm-hmm. So uh, my grandfather started moving her part of the estate, the farm, uh, to Robusta in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So what we have is at the, at this point in time we are probably fifty percent Arabica, fifty percent Robusta. Mm-hmm. However, we have moved back to Arabicas. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we are we've started grafting Arabica scions onto Robusta roots, the existing Robusta rootstocks because uh, yield with our Robustas. And um, rather than open up uh, our, our, our shade, uh, we've taken a conscious decision to move back to to Arabica. Okay, and we're going to discuss that more in the future episodes of what the reasoning behind that is. 
Um, make sure you check out that episode, folks. Uh, the, it's kind of wild. Um, and what about you, Koman? What are you growing on, on your farm? Well, so we both are growing this together. We are in, on the farm together. Okay. Uh, I work with other producers as well. Uh-huh. So they are, uh, so all the all the coffees that come from uh, through South India Coffee Co. It depends on uh, who the producer is. So it may be Arabica, it may be Robusta, it may be Excelsa, uh, Liberica. So we we do source a lot of different coffee. So okay, yes. Pr- producing everything that Akshay just said right now. And what about with regards to where the coffee moves? Is there a local market for it or is it mostly exported? So as as South India Coffee Co, we export most of our coffee. Uh, Mm -hmm. There is a percentage of it that that we have started uh, keeping for the Indian market because over the last two years, I saw a massive demand in the local market Mm -hmm. for specialty coffee and that kind of started getting me to think that okay we need to start keeping a small amount of coffee for the Indian market that small became medium the medium is going to become large so it's going to be a a good amount of coffee that is being uh, set aside for the Indian market now and remind me is the coffee that you're growing mostly specialty coffee so as far as now, again, as, uh, if you look at South India Coffee Company, uh, Komal is working with, I think, 18 or 19 different growers, mm-hmm. out of which Mule Madin, the, the estate, the farm we are on, is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, our farm is 80% speciality, 20% commodity. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow. But that's essentially, I mean, it started off uh, when Komal started South India Coffee Company in 2017. Um, basically, uh, Mule Mane was sort of had to carry the the baton to start with up till she could onboard other farmers as well because coffee as an industry is an economy of scale and I mean just having one farm uh, um, doesn't form a sustainable business. No, because we have to be profitable and we've got to think about revenue and all that kind of stuff. Yes. You've got to love people who, who do actual business when doing business. <laughs> It's not the really well done thing in our industry from the things that we're finding out on this podcast. Um, So we are throughout this series, folks, we're going to start looking at how we're future proofing coffee production in India. And a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about is going to be interesting to other origin countries. Um, In the next episode, we're going to talk about the current situation and challenges of growing coffee sustainably. So, um, Akshay, you don't have any opinions about this, right? None whatsoever? (laughs) None whatsoever. (laughs) Oh, I can't wait. Join us for the next episode, folks. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.